Kiyosha and I'm back for another budgeting video. If you guys like my budgeting videos, please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any more videos from me. And without further ado, let's just get into the video. So when a lot of people go on trips, they think about, you know, getting in a hotel, booking a flight, booking excursions, things like that. But there are several money tips that people forget about that will cause them to go over their budget. So today I'm gonna to tell you guys about the things that I've learned to do before I go on this trip to make sure I don't go over my budget. So the first thing a lot of people forget to do is to notify their bank and their credit card companies. If you don't know, most bank and credit card companies do not turn on international travel, okay? And the reason they don't turn it on is because they think that most of the time if you live in the United States and you have a credit card within the United States, that you're most likely not going to use your card internationally. So what it does is when you go out of the country and you don't notify your bank and you don't notify your credit card company, they will decline your purchase because they think that your card has been compromised. They think it has been stolen and that somebody out of the country is trying to rack up money on your credit card. So you need to make sure that you call your bank, your credit cards, and any other kind of um, cards that you will be using. You need to call them and let them know the date that you will be traveling. Now, the thing about this is they need to know the date range. And the reason they need to know the date range is so that they know that, okay, she's going to be spending money internationally from this date to this date so anytime that she spent money before this date or after this date most likely somebody has gotten her credit card information and they are trying to steal her money and so what they do is they give you a little time block and they say okay her car will work from here to here now if you extend your stay or you go past the time that you tell them that you wanted to stop using your car internationally you will have to call and extend and if you go before your trip you need to call and also let them know okay i'm going early or i'm staying late so that is the number one thing people forget about when they go to another country make sure you're calling your credit card company make sure you're calling your debit card company make sure you're calling your banks and letting them know that you will be traveling internationally and you will be using your card so another thing about banks and credit cards that you need to know that kind of goes in with this is that you need to find out if your bank or your credit card charges you a foreign transaction fee. Yes, you do. And the reason why you need to find this out is because it will make you go over your budget. So say, for instance, you don't want to take any cash internationally with you and you have $1,000 to spend, right? $1,000. You can go ham, get all the cute, pretty things you want to get with that $1,000. Well, when you find out, you get over there. When you are using your credit card in another country, they will charge you a foreign transaction fee. Some of them can be as low as 3% and as high as 10% or 5% or 6%, whatever the case may be. For me, my bank is going to charge me 3% international fee for using my card out of the country. Okay, I wasn't about to pay 3%, so no, that ain't happening here. But you need to find this out before you go on your trip so that you can maybe apply for another credit card that does not have foreign transaction fees or make precautions or put that extra money into your budget. So say now you have $1,000 and you know you may spend this much. And it's 3% of how much you spend now. It ain't no 3%. It's not like a set dollar amount, like $5 every time you use your car international or $6. It's 3% of the total amount of money that you use. So if you spend $1,000, it's 3% of $1,000. You see how they can add up real quickly? Yeah, ain't nobody got time for that. So make sure you can check with your bank. I actually check with my bank because one, I have two, I only had one credit card before I went on this trip, but I found out they're going to charge me a 3% international fee and foreign exchange fee or whatever you want to call it. And I wasn't here for it. I wasn't finna pay it. I wasn't finna do it. So I went ahead and applied for a credit card with my local bank to get a card that did not have international fees. You always need a credit card of some sort when you're over there for emergencies. If you want to pay the 3%, that is completely fine or whatever the percentage is that the bank is going to charge you. Just make you sure you factor that into your budget as well. The next money mistake is don't assume that you have transportation from the airport to your hotel. I went on a trip one time and I didn't realize uh, we got to figure out how to get to the hotel. That wasn't in my budget because I assumed when I booked the trip that it was going to get me from the airport to the hotel. 
not the case. I had to end up spending the extra $50 for a round trip. So $25 there, and then when I was getting ready to go back to the airport, another $25. So make sure you guys find out if this stuff is included in the trip that you booked. If you went through a travel agency, if you went through Groupon, if you went through, you know, just Expedia, whatever the case may be, a lot of time on Expedia, I know for sure they'll tell you that it's not included. And at the bottom of the screen, it'll be like, do you want transfer to your hotel and back to the place? Now, if you go to Groupon, on, it may or may not say in the fine print if it's included so you need to call the 1-800 number for the trip that you're going on and make sure it's included and if it's not then you need to ask them okay what services do y'all use what services do you have that I can add on to this or do you know a particular service in that country that I'm going to that is legitimate legitimate now you got to watch out there's a lot of crazies in different countries okay you know you a foreigner you don't know everything so you need to ask me if there's anybody they recommend that you use to get from the airport to your hotel because that can bust your budget as well because who knows how much it costs you know to get from the airport to wherever your hotel is because sometimes in foreign countries the airport is like miles and miles away from the hotel like hours so you need to make sure that you're factoring that into your budget if it's not included and if it's included even better so the next money mistake to avoid is do you have international roaming on your cell phone plan Yes, they charge you extra if you're using your cell phone in another country. Don't get it twisted. AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, all of them, they want your coins and they gonna get it, okay? So you need to activate it, number one, and see do they have a base rate or do they just charge you by every time you use your phone. And this includes Wi-Fi. Sometimes your Wi-Fi here in America, when you get over there, your phone Wi-Fi don't work. You have to connect to somebody Wi-Fi in the country that you're going to. And this is another thing that a lot of people forget about. And they get over there and they forgot to call their cell phone carrier and tell them, okay, I'm going to be in Dubai for a week. Make sure you turn on my international stuff so I can, you know, make my phone calls, Google up some directions, you know, get a Google translator, whatever you need. And so when you get over there, then your phone doesn't work. Then you can't make any calls. You can't post to Instagram. You can't, you know, call your family. Let them know you made it because you forgot to turn it on or see if they even have it. Now, another thing that I want to notify you guys about is if you have prepaid services, with some of these companies like T-Bowl, Sprint, AT&T. I have service with AT&T so for a fact. I know for prepaid plans, they do have they have no such thing. Your phone will not work in another country. So in that case, you need to do the research about how to get a SIM card for that country so that you can at least use the Wi-Fi. You may not necessarily want to make calls because they're still going to charge you that roaming if you call to America versus the country you're in. You may want to have that SIM card so you can use Wi-Fi in the country you're in, therefore not charging you as much. So I've looked into it because like I said, my phone is not gonna work when I'm over there. And they do have like little plans for foreigners, like 14 days is like $30 or something like that. Now I'm not gonna be there for 14 days, but $30 ain't nothing for me to get a foreign SIM card, put it in my phone, be able to use the internet, not necessarily make a telephone call, but I can WhatsApp my family, I can FaceTime my family, I can send them text messages. I can let them know that I'm okay and where I am. So that is something you need to look into when you're going to another country. Now, another thing about using a foreigner's SIM card is that your phone must be unlocked. Another kicker, your phone has to be unlocked. So you can't have a phone that's locked to AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint. It has to be unlocked to be used internationally for any SIM card to work inside of. So you need to make sure that you get your phone unlocked before you go to the other country and try to put another SIM card in there because it's not going to work. So check out all of those things before you get ready to travel internationally. So the next thing is to don't forget to research the local currency where you're going. A lot of people assume that American dollars are more than foreign dollars. Not always the case. Okay, so our dollar here, if you go to Dubai, may only be worth 50 cents. Or if you go to Thailand, it may be worth $5. So you need to find out how much money you actually really have while you're in Dubai. Because in America, you say, okay, I got a $1,000 budget to go to the mall, buy whatever I want to do, go on whatever excursion I want to do, go get an Uber, transportation, go out to eat, all this kind of stuff. But then when you get to Dubai and it's only worth 50 half of what you thought it was, and you only got $500, and now you're looking like, 
dang, I can't buy this. Dang, I ain't, can't, ain't got enough money for food. Or dang, now I got to put it on a credit card. Because for me, my budget, I don't want to put it on a credit card. If I put it on a credit card, it's to get like cash back services, but to also pay it off the next month when the bill is due. So you want to make sure that you're not overspending by not knowing what the exchange rate is for the currency in the country that you are in. Because like I said, American dollars may be more or less depending on the country that you're going to. So make sure you research the exchange rate. Make sure you have exactly how much money you want to spend in their foreign currency. Not American dollars, but in the currency that of the country that you're going to. So if you want to have a thousand dollars in Dubai money, and Dubai money is only worth 50 cent of our dollars that means you need 1500 versus a thousand to in order to spend the thousand dollars in the buy that you want now i don't know if these exchange rates are right this is just me making up stuff okay you still need to do your research you need to look it up find out how much our dollars work in the country that you're going to and um, make sure you adjust your budget for that okay so the next thing people make mistakes of is tips where you're in a foreign country like i said the currency and the money is different so you need to make sure you understand how much money you're tipping a person. So say that your money, you know, is 10 US dollars. You do 20% of 10 US dollars. But if 10 US dollars is only half of Dubai money, which is $5, then you wouldn't do, you know, 20% of $10 per se, because you don't have $10, you have five. So you do 10%, 20% of $5. So you need to understand well, you need to research how they tip in the country that you're going to. You never want to go to a country and not tip the hotel workers, not tip the cab driver or the taxi driver. I don't think you can tip Uber people. I think you can on the app, so you don't really have to worry about that. But like tipping the people who, you know, take you on an excursion, whatever the case may be, you need to know the, the practices of that country to order to tip the staff or the waitress or whomever accordingly. You never want to offend the people who are taking care of you. I'm here to tell you, okay? You want to take care of them so they can take care of you very well, okay? So you want to make sure that you're tipping appropriately, that you find out how they tip, what they tip, and what is appropriate and what's not appropriate. And also make sure you look at your check, because sometimes in a foreign country, the tip is always already included in the check. The gratuity is already included in some American, you know, in some American restaurants and stuff the tip is already included so you don't have to add it on unless you want to just give them extra money so you need to make sure you're finding out what the practices is make sure the tip or the gratuity is not already included and tip accordingly don't tip the housekeeper at the end of your trip why because you don't have the same housekeeper every day who do you know work every single day somebody got a day off so you should tip your housekeeper according to each day because today you might have janice tomorrow you may have julie and the next day you may have donna okay and if you wait all the way to the end to tip that then donna's gonna get julie and janice's money and then they never got any money from you okay because it's most likely that that housekeeper she's not going to give them their cut of the money so make sure you understand that you need to tip your housekeeper every single day in a foreign country, even in the United States, if you're gonna tip the housekeeper because you most likely will not have the same housekeeper because people have off days and they rotate and things like that. So make sure you're tipping the staff. That even includes the doorman because it could be a different doorman every day. It could be a different driver. Say you set up a driving service, you may not get the same driver every day to drive you around wherever it is that you're going. So make sure you tip that person for that day in case it's a different person. The next thing is to don't leave valuables out. Secure your valuables. This is something everybody should know. So you're in a hotel, you gotta say, put your valuables in your safe, your passport, your itinerary, your jewelry, whatever the case may be. When I go on vacation, I don't take expensive jewelry. I take jewelry like this that's from Walmart or somewhere where it's if somebody get it they can have it because it only cost me two dollars anyway okay but as far as your passport and money and things like that if they have a safe put it in the safe if not make sure that you take it with you wherever you go another thing is sometimes the hotel will have like a safe room you can go down to the desk the hotel staff service and say okay i need you to put this in the main safe i need you to put my valuables up you're ready to get it you can go back to the desk and they'll give it to you so also check with your hotel to see if they have some kind of safe that's even more secure than the safe in your room if you just don't feel like it's safe enough to leave your things within the room another thing is when you're out and about traveling 
if you're a tourist, make sure you have a crossbody purse or make sure you have one of those little purses. I think I'm going to order me one from Amazon. One of those little purses that go under your clothes so it looks like a jogger's belt, but it's really flat and you can put your money in there and your ID in there and then it lays flat under your clothes so nobody even suspects that you have any money or anything with you. Those are really, really well um, but just make sure you always keep your purse in front of you. Make sure you have something that's crossbody. Make sure you're not carrying a cute little purse with your hand. Somebody run by and snatch it out of your hand and then you lost all your stuff. So make sure you're watching your valuables, keeping them close to you, keeping them with you. This includes the United States versus going international because people still, no matter what country they in, okay? So be safe wherever you go. So the last and final tip is do not use the public Wi-Fi. Do not use the public Wi-Fi to access anything that can be stolen. So don't access your bank accounts. Don't put in passwords. None of that. So make sure that when you're using a public Wi-Fi that is outside of the hotel, sometimes the hotels can be real sketchy too. So make sure that you're using a Wi-Fi that you know is secure, that you've paid for, that you've got security with. Um, so that people can't steal your information because public wi-fi means that anybody can look at what it is that you're doing including hackers because you know that's what they do or anybody sitting by you or looking over your shoulder or whatever the case may be make sure you're not putting in passwords using public wi-fi and things like that because you definitely don't want anybody to steal your data and steal all your money and your identity and all that kind of stuff because that's just a whole mess Okay, you guys, so I hope all of these tips help you to avoid making money mistakes, okay? These are a lot of things that I researched before I been to go on my trip to Dubai, and now some of these things I know for the United States when I decide to go on trips to the United States as well, but you also need to be really, really um, cautious about going out of the country and making these mistakes because there's nobody there to, per se, save you, like all your families in, you know, another country and you might be going with just you and somebody else you always can go to the u.s embassy if you need to and you're out of money and all that kind of stuff they can give you loans they can help you find your uh, get a new passport whatever the case may be so if something goes on in another country always know where your u.s embassy is always know the address where it's located and that is the first place you need to go if you're in any kind of trouble if somebody steals all your identity steals all your money you don't have any more money they have systems in place to help you get home get money and be able to survive until you get back to your house if you guys like this video please give it a thumbs up make sure you guys subscribe make sure you turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any more videos from me and i'll see you guys in the next video bye